So to install Magic Profile and get ready to start working with, it's very quick and simple. You just come to Edit, Preferences, we come to File Paths, then we add a new library, and all we're going to do is locate our Magic Profile folder wherever you've saved it. So here, I just have it here for this demo. Once we locate the folder, we don't click out. We want to click inside the folder, and then once we can see Profile Previews, just click Add Asset Library. Now it'll be here called Magic Profile, and once we quit, we open up the magic profile in the asset library you should have all the assets pre-marked we've renamed it to magic profile because it has a few new features the first one being that we've added over 600 custom profiles which are all curve objects here ready to go they're marked in the asset browser but not only that in the asset browser they've now been converted into tools so you'll notice down here on each one of these it has a little node and that's because if we drag this onto any object, so let's say over here what we have is just an edge with verts and it has a modifier on it, which is one of these because you just drag them on. So let's say, for instance, now we wanted to replace this with this profile. Come to the modifiers tab, we can just remove the current modifier. So we just have the edge. And then we could do Shift H to isolate the edge if we didn't want to make sure we don't drop the modifier on anything else. And then we can just drag and drop it on. And that's it. If we do Alt H now, you can see that, that that profile is on there. But we also have full control over the depth, the width, the f overall scale of the curve, the flip direction. So we can flip it to the inside. So now if we come in here, you can see here, this is where the verts are. But if we click flip, it's going to flip it to the outside. So let's say you have a wall on the outside that wants to go around. Another option we now have is because it's not based on curves anymore, it's based on verts and edges. It means you don't have to convert it to a curve. And it also means that you can now press Control Shift B and just bevel the profile just like this. And we're going to get the exact same thing. So let's say maybe we put something more interesting on than this one. We'll just remove the modifier and maybe we'll try this one here. And now we have that and we might do the scale four just to make it more clear. And this is super powerful now because we can just drag and drop any single curve directly onto any single edge. This also works with stuff like a plane. So let's say if we just add a plane here, we'll just go plane. Maybe we'll do vertex. We'll grab these two edges. We'll bring it out. We'll just make it a slight bit bigger and we'll do something a bit more interesting. So we'll extrude this section and then extrude that section and then press A, X, limited dissolve to remove all the other edges. And now if we drop one of these modifiers onto this plane, you'll see it's just added it directly on there, ready to go. And the same thing, we have the control, we have upward control, we have depth control, we have flip control, we also have cyclic. So this is another one. So let's say we want this to be joined. You'll notice here we fixed as well how this is completely even the whole way around when it's non-cyclic. So it's not connected now. But this edge here shows us where it would be connected. And as long as this vert is aligned with the last one right here, directly aligned. And how we do that is we just grab it and then lock it to the axis and then snap it to the other vert. So if you don't have snapping on, come vertex, boom. And then we just lock it there and we should be able to snap it straight to the top. And then once we have that, we can just take the box cyclic and that's it. It's a completely rounded, completely cyclical profile. So this is super powerful and since the update it's a lot better than what it was before and we also have rotation so let's say we wanted to flip to the bottom side because flip brings it to the inside or the outside of the curve well we want to flip to the bottom side we can do 180 degree rotation yeah so in this profile isn't that interesting but yeah right there as i was saying if we want to do cyclical so we want to fill these two gaps all we do is we use the cyclical button and as long as they're aligned they're going to get a nice fill on there so and we can still always come back in and the, oh yeah here's one more thing to be aware of is if you do use cyclical here yeah it means that there's not really an edge between these two points it's auto fill in the edge based on the geometry node so if we do want to bevel this corner we can't bevel it because there's no other edge so all we need to do is select the both and we just fill it anyway even though it doesn't really change anything because we have to use the toggle to have a cyclic profile. and But now this will allow us to come in and just bevel the edge as well here. So you have those rounded profiles going around. And we can still do the same. So if we look at the top and we come into edge mode, you can see the edges on the inside. We click flip, flips it to the other side. 
quick flip and if we don't want it facing upwards we just do a rotation of 180 degrees and so that's magic profile and these are all modifiers so every single one of these is now its own tool the next thing i want to show you is maybe how you might go about changing the defaults of each one of these so let's say for now if we remove this and we bring this profile in on top you can see it's at a scale of one with a one x and one y so the width and height dimension are one the overall curve scale is one but let's say you wanted this to come in by default a little bit bigger than what it does at the minute like you want it to come in at the scale of two well, what we do is we open up, let's say, another window here. We'll open up a geometry node. And with this modifier selected on this object, we'll see it's number 564. And all we do is we can come over to the interface here and we can click scale and put a default value in here of whatever you want. The same goes for flip. If you want it to be flipped the other way, by default, you can remove the default or even hide the modifier over here or adjust the entire magic profile inside the node group over here because every single one of these when you drag this drag and drop this onto an edge it is just this node group with a different curve profile that was located over there on the first section so over here so that's what it is essentially and so setting defaults is just here in the interface correct asset open in the geometry node so so for instance we have five six four here in the modifier and right here the geometry node asset is 564 which also correlates with this one in the asset browser so if we change the default value for this and click save inside the actual magic profile blend file then therefore it will apply the new default whenever each time you now drag it onto a new object so now that that's done we're going to show you another thing that we added which is called magic wall and essentially it's just a simple version of magic profile but instead it's made for walls so it can be work on two objects it can work on planes or edges again and this time we still want to make sure that there's no like loop cuts or extra edges inside the object we want our wall to go around at the start so let's say for instance if we started with a rectangle and then we extruded it out and it created multiple faces that wouldn't be ideal you press a x limit dissolve again so you're down to one face and then it really is two versions of the magic wall so there's a centimeter version and a millimeter version and if we drag this centimeter version or millimeter version on we just get a wall straight away and it's the same thing applies top view if you go to edit mode it's on the inside of the entire vert and we can also select these edges with edge angle overlays on so if we come up here we come on here we click text info so we see text info and we also come over to mesh edit mode overlays and put on edge length then we can see the length of each one of these inside the tool but the same goes over here if we just join these areas for a second and we open up our modifier panel again and you'll see on this one it's called magic wall and it has kind of a few different settings that aren't the same as the profile and that is we have wall thickness and wall height at the start and it's in centimeters so it starts with the default value of 30 centimeters which would be an exterior wall and a three meter height now you can just change these and procedurally go around changing the thickness or thinness of the walls and also flipping the walls to the other side so let's say you didn't want to work on a wall with the edge on the inside you wanted to work with the edge on the outside we could just flip it and then we can work from the outside instead and let's say now we wanted to do interior walls with the same modifier but different sizes and thicknesses how would we do that okay well first of all let's say we'll make this one cyclic because it's an exterior wall so we'll take the box cyclic and we'll say this is our overall shape maybe we'll make this a little bit bigger so we can drag this out drag this out we'll just work with this for now maybe we'll flip it as well so we'll work with the interior line and now we wanted to work on the interior walls well there's a couple of things you can do we can first of all bring maybe our wall height up to five meters or something so we'll do 500 centimeters so we have that and then if we want to do interior walls we can just come in and we could shift d and just bring up one of these edges and at the minute it doesn't do much because it's not really 
like it has a modifier on there but we have cyclic on so what it's going to do is it's going to try calculate circle and it can't connect this out so if you untick cyclic you'll see now it calculates it properly but we don't have this edge so what we want to do is we don't just leave cyclic on and with this newly created edge selected we can press p separate by selection and now when we come into object mode and we just select the object maybe come into wireframe now we have the new object selected we can remove the original modifier and we could add a new magic ball modifier onto the object and this is going to allow us to go to 15 or whatever here we want we'll come back into solid mode into rendered mode for a second and when we edit this one now with the same type of style as the first one we can control this modifier independently from the first wall so essentially it's just duplicating an edge or creating a new magic wall with another modifier on it and then adjusting it separately and that's all we do so and the same thing applies for an edge so if you don't want to drag it onto a plane or you have an edge you can drag magic wall onto an edge as well we just drag it onto the edge and the same thing applies we just using the modifier tab so we can make the wall thickness whatever five meters five 550 centimeters sorry or we can make it five meters high now this is the millimeter version so we did five thousand and yeah it just works the exact same you know we have a non-cyclic version here we just take cyclic to fill the gap we can adjust the walls whatever we want we can even make curved walls using bevel we can do that there so it's pretty fast and efficient way of making walls so how would I go about applying both of these and using both of these tools together? Well, the best way would be, we'll show you over here in the blank space. We'll just press, bring the cursor here, shift A, mesh, single vert, boom, vertex, extrude, make your shape, follow your plan, do whatever you need to do. We'll just leave it like that for now. Once you have your shape, we drag on our wall. And we drag it onto the... See, that's one issue that you might have sometimes is if you can't drag it onto the edge, there's two things you can do. You can either press Shift-H to isolate it once again, and drag on your wall, and that's cool. And there's the wall on. Press Alt-H to bring everything back. And that's one way. Or another way is if you have the edge selected you're able to select the edge you could just come to the modifier panel click add modifier come down to magic wall click magic wall centimeter and that's that there so we just add it like a regular modifier and the same thing just go cyclic we'll do that so maybe we'll set our wall thickness just for i know this isn't realistic but we're going to do it anyway and once we have our main wall even though this is still virtual geometry so it might just round off a few of these corners even this isn't even though this is a procedural wall we could still add booleans to this so let's be able to bring this up to 600 for a minute and we'll just do shift a mesh cube scale z bring it down just something like this for now make sure it's intersecting click it here we'll click here click object click bool and click brush boolean difference and you'll see now we have a window cut through the wall even though the wall itself is still procedural so even though we can move this in edit mode when we come back to object mode this is still dynamic so we can bring the windows around and another thing is let's say we have another we wanted two windows here we could shift e and you'll see that it doesn't actually cut the other one yeah but if we click both of them then and we join it to the original we're using Control j but we control it, we joined it backwards there. So you can see here, we select this one first and then this one, and we joined this one to that one. That means they'll cut through. If we go the other way about it and we join this one to this one, it won't cut through because we're essentially making this one attached to this one. This one has no modifier. This one has the modifier. So we want to click the one without the modifier first, then the one with the modifier, and then control J. And then this just applies again. So if we wanted another double window over here, the one without the modifier, then the one with the modifier, and then control J. And that'll allow you to make these dynamic window cuts in the magic wall. And obviously you can go in and adjust the size of these boxes in the dimensions panel, get them exactly to the size you need them before you put the dynamic cuts in. And this is really good for concepting because you can still just, like we can just take this cube here then 
and we could just shift E and we could just bring it up here and we could just rotate 90 like this, just slide it down and the one without the modifier, the one with the modifier, control J and now we have one cutter that's going to just be all the windows there that goes through and we can keep doing that the whole way around and then once we're done we can apply, once we're sure we can apply the modifiers to everything and we can also go like this, right click here or click on the main wall because we still have a dynamic object now at the minute. Remember, we can't necessarily go around and convert these top edges ready for our profile. So what we need to do here is control A, visual geometry to mesh. And now when you come into edit mode, now we're going to have real geometry all over the place. So we can hide this completely now. This is all real mesh now because we've just applied everything to it the cutters and the shape and it's no longer dynamic but now what we can do is we can come into edge mode we could alt select this edge we could shift D it so we have one whole edge which is ready for our profile we're just going to press escape so it goes back into place but it's still selected we press p selection and now when we have now we can just select this we can do the same thing shift h and we can just pick our profile whichever one we want we just drag it on we do alt h and now is all it is here is let's say we have at this minute it's flipped correctly so all we need to do is 180 degree rotation on this one it looks like with a flip and now it's ready to go so we can scale it up and it's ready to go the whole way around our entire room bar this last part because we don't have cyclic put on but now we do and i might as well just turn off the overlays here for a second and add in some extra lights here so we can actually see what's going on scale it up make it more powerful bring it up a little bit let's see where we're at i think i'm just gonna do something like this do something like a thousand for now so we can see what we're dealing with and then we might just grab it come to the top view bring it over this way rotate it a little bit we get some of that corner angle but now you can see here that we have the same thing we can adjust we can come back to this selection here we can always adjust the size and then even if we don't want to adjust the skies independently let's say we just want to adjust the depth we can do that as well we can even tuck it up further or we can even stretch it out further because you have full control over this entire thing and even if it goes outside the wall we can just do a flip and it flips it to the outside ready to go obviously this edge isn't ready for this exact one there's one more thing to be aware of and that's if we scale something the size is no longer going to be right until you apply the scale so let's say we're using magic wall here and we have a 30 centimeter scale but we scale the object like this well now it's not going to be 30 centimeters from here to here because the object has just been scaled but if you do want to scale it up and you want to retain the same width and actual true size when we scale it up we can just do Control a apply the scale and now these walls are still going to be the right thickness but you have the new size Obviously, we don't want that. We just want it down smaller. We want to click Control A, apply the scale, and it's going to make it thicker to the same size. But yeah, that's really how easy it is to apply a powerful profile to an interior molding the whole way around an entire house. We still haven't even added. We can put on shade smooth here as well if we want to get more, even crispier details. I'm making videos and recording at the same time. If we change it to cycles and stuff, we're going to get a much cleaner and much better look. But yeah, if you found any of this useful or you are interested in this product, check the description out because all the info will be down there. I haven't got the chance to update the free version of this product yet, but I do plan on updating the free version of this product in the future. There's been a lot of work gone into making this just so smooth and buttery and over 600 default node tools right here in the browser ready to just be dragged and dropped onto any edge or plane along with a new tool, Magic Wall hopefully you can find use in this tool and if you want to support us please check it out that's everything for this video and we'll see you in the next one